are back on Dauphin Islands Beach. Now, if you are lucky enough to get to the beach, any beach in the near future, one of the things you might be tempted to do is go hunting for seashells. And there are tons of cool seashells to be found. Here on Dolphin Island especially, we have lots of shells and shell fragments because of a beach re-nourishment project that happened a couple of years ago. So join us as we check out all of the cool shells and we'll see what we can find. So look at just all of these shells that are out here on the beach. And we totally didn't set up ahead of time for educational purposes. Now some of the main groups of seashells that you can find out here, mollusks, shell-making animals. You can find bivalves like clams or oysters that make a two-piece shell, gastropods like snails which make a coiled shell, and then a couple of other things that we're going to talk about that don't make true shells but you can still find what's left of them on the beach. Now by far what we found most of this morning were those bivalves. Some of the bigger shells that we found look like this, a giant Atlantic cockle clam, and they can get much, much bigger. This is just a piece of one. And I always think these kind of look like potato chips with those long ridges that go down the shell. This one you can see is home to other animals. There are barnacles growing on it, which are a kind of crustacean. We also have other clams. These are very fragile, which is why we only found pieces. These are angel wing clams. They've got a very pronounced or very noticeable hinge, which is where that shell would come together and open and close. Unlike a false angel wing, which does not have a very big hinge to the shell. We found little slipper shells, which have a tiny little spot for the animal that made this shell to live. We found some scallops, which have a little wing on the back. They can actually swim around a little bit, unlike most of these bivalves, which are stuck in one spot on the bottom. That means sessile and benthic. They're on the bottom and they don't move. We found a whole bunch of arc clams, and there are tons of different species of arc clams, which we don't have time to talk about every single one. But we've found at least four different kinds in just about five to ten minutes. Another very thin and fragile type of shell. It's called a jingle shell. We found a couple of those. And when you pick these up, be very, very careful. It's a super, super thin layer. So they're easy, easy, easy to break. Now, some of you might enjoy eating oysters. I have not yet acquired the taste, but a lot of animals love chowing down on these. And others like to use them as shelter or protected area for their young to grow up. We didn't find any whole ones. But we found some half shells. The soft, squishy oyster that made this shell would live right inside there. Two-piece shell to keep it nice and safe. And they went on and lived their lives. Some died tragically when they were very, very small. Now, over here, we have some of our snails. Those gastropods with the coiled shell. We found the tops of conch shells. This is a Florida fighting conch. We found two of those. We found a baby's ear, or common baby's ear. When this snail is alive, most of the snail is actually outside of this shell. It can't really crawl into it. We found a moon snail shell, which is responsible for creating little holes in the backs of other shells. It's carnivorous and it loves to eat other mollusks. And it goes through a gruesome process to do this. It just kind of <laughs> vomits all over the back of the shell, licks its own stomach acid that's slowly dissolving that hard shell material. It pokes its way through, makes a little teeny tiny opening, and then using more stomach acid, it turns the clam or the oyster or the other snail inside 
into kind of a vomit smoothie, and then it slurps it up and eats it. Sometimes you find those holes that indicates a snail predation or snail attack on these little cute guys. Smooth, rounded snail shells. These are called olive snails. And then if you find anything that kind of looks like a drill bit, it is called an auger snail. So you find these out here as well. Now, like I said at the very beginning, there are other animals outside of the mollusks that leave stuff for us to find on the beach. They're not making necessarily seashells, but they are cool things to find and pick up. Let's go check them out. Down here, we have more of those barnacles that I talked about. These are a type of crustaceans. They're more closely related to things like blue crabs and shrimp, things like that, than they are to other mollusks, like uh, these things we just talked about. They're not a mollusk, crustacean. Remember that. Well, they look nothing like those tasty, delicious, pinching things that we find in restaurants. They will look for any kind of hard structure they can to make their home. So it might be the back of a seashell, it might be a piece of driftwood, but even when these animals die, you can see they're providing homes for other animals. Hermit crabs are another great example. What are they going to be living in? Shells like those gastropod shells. We also found tiny pieces of encrusting corals, which are a type of cnidarian, which means these are things that sting. Teeny tiny little stinging animals that make their homes right out here. We have a great Zoom video lesson on YouTube for you to check out all about these little stingers. Last but not least, we didn't find any whole sand dollars, we just found pieces of them. This is just a chunk of a sand dollar. We're looking at the skeleton on the inside and you can see a whole bunch of little holes, spongy looking network on the inside that they can pump water through when they're alive and that's how they move around. So. For a short amount of time, looking for shells on the beach, doing a little beach combing, we actually found a lot of cool stuff. And I hope that when you get to go to the beach next, you find cool stuff like this as well. Happy beach combing.